people try to argue and say that it is a conspiracy theory when you are talking about David Rockefeller, when you're talking about uh, the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. This is actual fact. There's nothing, there's no theoretical anything behind it. They met off the coast of Jekyll Island of Georgia. They met off the coast on a small island. You're talking about David Rockefeller and some other individuals to come up with a way where they could take control over the monetary policies of America. The Federal Reserve has nothing to do with the United States Constitution. It states in the United States Constitution that Congress shall hold the right to print the money and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. But who is the Federal Reserve? They have nothing to do with America. They are a gangster group, a third party mm -hmm. who came in and they took over these banking systems from Europe. And then they gradually moved into the rest of the planet. By the time they got to America, that's when 1913 came along with the passing of the Federal Reserve Act. And once that happened, all of the power to print money, coin money, etc., turned over into the Federal Reserve and no longer Congress. It used to say a silver certificate at the top of the dollar. Mm. It said silver certificate, meaning, oh, this is backed by silver. Okay. Or it was backed by gold. Oh, right. Okay. But then it switched to Federal Reserve note. What the hell does that mean? And now the money system is not under the people. It's not under Congress. It's not under our control, per se. It's under the the control of a third party gangster group organization that uses it to control and enslave the planet. That's what that is about. Hence why the economy is so high. They use war to make money. But if they use the war to make money, then the dollar goes further into debt, therefore having less worth, higher inflation. Mm -hmm. So what a dollar is worth today ain't nothing. It's nothing compared to what it was back then. Yeah. You know, America currently on uh, Wall Street, they're saying it's a little over $22, $23 trillion in debt. Well, no, that's not true. They're not adding in Medicaid, Medi-Cal, all those things, the IOUs that they have for all these other nations. America's over $70 trillion in debt and it's growing every day. They're printing millions every day, which means you print more, the money becomes less and less and less and less and less valuable. That's why also people need to start looking at gold, hence why gold is so high right now. Yeah, all the time I have this week. You know what I'm saying? All the time I silver is going up, even though some people say, I don't buy silver, but the pre-1933 silver coins in particular, you should be buying because those are worth about, I think it costs about $23, $25 per coin. So you want to get some of those. Why? Because the dollar, brother, is about to become completely obsolete. It's about to get to a point like it got over in Europe where they were having piles of it in the middle of the street. You know, they was burning, you know, smoking cigars, lighting <laughs> with the money. I know some of y'all like, man, ain't gonna happen. Listen, bro. <laughs> They're, they're talking about this economic gap because of the pandemic. Nearly 40 million people were unemployed just a couple months ago right. in America. So you're going to give a stimulus check to 40 million people. You're not going to give $10 to 40 million people. You see what I'm saying? So you're giving millions, billions, trillions that you don't have to people who are not working. And then you shut it down again, which is why, you know, Trump and everyone else wanted to open it up. They're like, listen, it don't, it don't matter if people get sick. Yeah, we, Either we're going down economically <laughs> or we're going down physically and health wise. We got to choose one. So right. they'd rather open up the economy, let some people get sick and die, but to allow us, the, the economy, to thrive and survive because it is upside down. Right. You see what I'm saying? That's what it is. So, it, But it all started again with the national banking families of Europe and then, of course, pushing for war to make more money, sending people to die, more war, more money, more interest, et cetera, et cetera. And that is what it has been. Since 1913. Yeah, it's interesting because um, a lot of people might not realize, like you said, that the Federal Reserve Bank is not a, it's not it's not a government agency. No. It's just Fed. It's like it's like um, it's like FedEx. Yeah. Like, it's just like you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. just be, it ha you you would just automatically think it's it's federal and they yeah. print money and they so mm -hmm. just by default you would think okay it's part of it's part of the government, no, but it's all. actually not part of the government at all. Not at all. And it's interesting. Not at all, bro. Anybody who's dealing with economics, I mean, this is this is the show y'all watch. You know, y'all watch these brothers. They give you the game. They give you as much game as possible. That was possibly some of the most important game they could give you is to understand the difference between the Federal Reserve and the government when it comes to money, the monetary system. That's why Bitcoin is so important. Some people talk about that always. Oh, the, the, the economists in America will say all kinds of crap because it's not controlled. It's a universal currency. You can't control it. You can transfer it anywhere. So they're like, uh, no, it's bad because we want y'all to stick... With the American dollar. Mm -hmm. Nah, hell no, nah, player. We know what's going on with that dollar. That dollar's gone. That's done for. Okay, so now you have to look at other forms of currency and be very wise about looking at other currency, investing in other currency, and moving your money around. Really, 
you I gotta start pulling your stuff out of the bank in a minute. I ain't trying to go against what y'all. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> Any thoughts you got on that? You know, you let me know, but be very mindful. Just understand that you know, don't put all of your money in one location that is controlled by the Federal Reserve or any of its banks. Yeah, no, you know what? what you know what? Hey, I don't know if people know this, but there's a shortage of coins. Yeah, oh, bro. that's it's, been all it's over. Interesting. Yeah. And B, um, yeah, the bank thing is interesting because it's like, all right. What's the odds of bank having not enough money until they don't have enough money? Because <laughs> people because start taking their money they in Greece. In Greece, a few years ago, yeah. they shut the banks down. You, they made a stop on ATM right because people was trying to. So it's like theoretically, like if you have ten million dollars, the bank doesn't have ten million dollars. That's why they only insure two hundred fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. So if you go, oh, we dropped that one. Go ahead. Like you literally, <laughs> can't, like, what? yeah, you, you yes, literally sir. can't. Yeah, it's the FDIC insured. So you could literally only take up to a certain amount and then they got to like actually order other because there's, the, there's regional banks mm -hmm. for the Federal Reserve. Like there's, fe there's Federal Reserve regional banks like St. Louis, New York, LA, like there's different regions. So they have to order the money. Mm -hmm. And then this is kind of a more involved conversation, but that kind of goes with the interest rates, yep. right? Because they charge the regular retail banks money to actually borrow. So when they lower the interest rates or when they raise the interest rate, it, it all comes into play. And making money off your money. Right. Yeah, that, exactly. That, that's one of the things that, that was, I mean, a lot of people have said that to us and hopefully people get the message, but like money is a tool to get assets. Absolutely. Right? It's having it sitting in the bank doesn't mean anything. I know like Fernando had told us that and it stuck with my mind when you just said that. It was like, yo, every dollar is a worker to me. So I got to put that, that money put to, to work. got to put it to work. You have to and let it make money for you. You know, that's, that's where the investments and the assets come in, own something that builds and its, and its value increases in its worth. That's what we have to look at. Again, most of the people in the hood, y'all like, look, I got $40, bro, for the next week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a like, fact. $40, $50 for the next week. That's a fact. What can I do with this? That's why we have to now pull our resources. We don't have a choice, bro. We have to practice group economics. There, there is no choice here. There's none. Most of the people in the hood don't have $200 to their family. And I know it may sound crazy for some people. It's like, no, 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 seriously. That's a fact. Even, even the money that we do have, we're spending it in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. But we have to now look at, okay, what can we afford to put in a pot, depending on what block we're on, depending on what hood we're from, the hoods. Y'all got to come together and start putting money in the pot, whatever crib hood, blood hood, essays, whatever, and start putting your dollars together so everyone can work a little and no one would have to work a lot. And then you can start buying up things. You know what's crazy? Really where it I is. feel like... We're the only people that have to be convinced about Kuka economics because everything else, because like I went to this Indian wedding, a, fr a friend of mine's Indian, it's my first time going to Indian wedding. So it's a whole week experience if you ever been to an Indian wedding. It's like, mm -hmm. and he was Sikh. So they had like, a, um, oh, yeah. it was like a whole thing. So the yeah. whole, so the long story short is like where he lives in New Jersey, like that's where like mm -hmm. the whole town is all Sikhs. And um, they have an interesting thing where they own like motels. Yep. They own like a hundred motels. Come on, bro. And, that's um, yeah, and then like he was explaining to me the process. So it's like one person from India comes, they buy a hotel, then they send enough money for the next person to come, and then the, they work in the hotel. They learn the business of the hotel, Listen. and then the other people give them money to start their hotel. When they get enough money, they pay it back, and then it's like a whole thing that they just run it back again. So I see that in other cultures, and it's just like it's interesting to me because that's group economics. That's group economics. But for us, it's still something that we kind of have to really be – convinced and understand so uh, what, how, how do we how do we get away from from that mindset and really move into make it normal like yes. make group economics normal one it has to be promoted and it has to be it has to be um talked about more by those of us that practice it in a positive way we gotta we gotta brag about that like yeah bro i put my family on like i said this way this book was edited it was written by me black man then it was edited by black woman then my product manager black woman which is my sister, then her two sons, they are employed as the packagers. So we employed them. Then I have my uh, my mother and I have, I think, two cousins who also work for me. I employ my own family. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Black women for the majority, but black people, period. That's it. I said, I'm not about to employ nobody else. I'm employing my family. I'm going to free y'all up so that we can invest in each other and then we can go ahead and build on something else. And we are building on something else now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how it's supposed to be. I'm not playing no games out here. There's a lot of black people and families who are doing this. There's great pride in that. Come on, bro. And see, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> We're doing that right now. And yeah. you have to be, you know, it's we don't trust each other, bro. Yeah. And, and we, yeah. Can we, we, we can stimulate each other's economy even with, with us. Yeah. Like, so they see me and Troy as the host of Earn Your Leisure, but it's more than us. So we have Mike. Who does all of our technical stuff? So we all right we, we, we all grew up together. Another one of our friends, Jamal, he just left, but he's the head of our marketing. See? So then Mike's brother 
is like he edits because I write, but I'm not the best with grammar. Mm -hmm. So he's our editor for our, our writing. And then his, his other brother actually edits our videos. He DJs our live events. So it's like, why would we pay somebody else? We could stimulate each other. We all come from the same neighborhood. Exactly. So now we're stimulating each other's economy. And ultimately, it's only going to come back to all of us anyway That's and make right. all of us stronger yeah. as we opposed to trying to you know work with this person and that person and it's like by, before you know it like you don't even understand what's going on and I feel like people will take more pride and they'll they'll go the extra mile because and, now it actually makes sense where yes. it's like his brother's gonna work harder for him yeah. <laughs> because he know he wants him to be successful right. like, you know, yeah. it's not right. just a random person who you just outsource and it's like I'll get to it when I can get to it man I'll say, I'll say two things on this first of all we as a people have to be willing to work. That's the that's the part. Like we got to be real about this. This is what accountability. Is. <laughs> that's a big fact. Yo, that is a big playing, one. Man. Yeah. If I put yeah. you on, yeah. be on. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Don't, 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 don't give me a bad name. I, I can't, I'm doing my best to keep this thing afloat. Don't come in like, man, where the bag? I'm trying to get the bag. Like, what are you, you can't get. It's plenty of bags. <laughs> We're talking like it's only one bag. That's a fact. Like no, you got to keep adding to the, you. Get, okay, we're gonna give you a bag. It's gonna be empty at first. Yeah. You're gonna add to it. I'm gonna switch them out of rappers. Be talking, nigga. Don't be tripping. Yeah. No, it's, you're gonna add to it. And us as a people, we are the bag. That's what we got to get through yep. our head. We are the it. value. It's, it's come on, bro. It's the value. We have to add to that. So we we add to that piece, and we have to be prideful or proud and, and thankful and happy to work for one another. If I'm working with my brother, I'm working with my brother, and we have to treat. The people that work with us fairly too. Right. So we gotta have love. We gotta have respect. We have to have trust. My graduates from my school, being Forbes, backdrop, backdrop, <laughs> a mic drop, backdrop, backdrop. <laughs>